Hi, my name is Tom Skarlinski. I'm a USDA identifier in the Port of Miami. I also specialize in identifying Thysanoptera. Today what I want to talk about is what are we going to do? We've got this thrips, now we have to identify it. So I'm going to give you some resources, some examples of what I use in my laboratory to figure out what species I've got. Now you can use different resources, one resources by region, you can use general resources, but I'm going to give you an overview of some of them that I use by regions. In the Nearctic, I use a Lucid ID key, it's called the Thrips of California by Hoddle Mountain in Paris. Also an older, older but goody, if you will, the Thysanoptera of Illinois, and also the genus Thrips by Nakahara in 1994. I go over to the pond, the Palearctic. I usually use the British Handbook by Mound in 1976. And when I have immatures, I like to use the Larval ID by Verberg in 2010. Um, as we go south into the Indo-Malaya, or as some people say, the Oriental area, um, and I'm going to show you this one right here first, but actually this is my, if I've got, a specimen that I know is a genus thrips. I usually refer to this by Palmer, 1992. This the, and he covered all of the thrips uh, species of the thrips genus from Pakistan to the Pacific. And also, if I need to, if I'm in this area of the world, or my interception is from this area of the world, uh, this is a great resource of Thripiny of Southeast Asia by Mound and NG of 2009. Moving south into the Australasia area, or Australia and New Zealand, um, Ozthrips is also a Lucid ID key, and they also have other resources on that web page. And I'll show you the uh, links to those in the next slide. Um, you get into the Afrotropical area. I like to use as a usual, the, my first go-to is the, uh, the Thrips of Tropical Africa by Palmer in 1990. And then if I have something in that genus of the genus thrips, I'll use this, the Afrotropical region genus thrips by Mound 2010. And then finally, going back over the pond to the South America, Central America, or the Neotropics, is the thrips of Central and South America by Mound Amarulo in 1996. Here's a, uh, a list of the references. I'll leave this for a minute, so if you'd like to um, copy this down so you can go ahead and have these get these resources. Um, there's the links. Here's the link for the Thrips of California, and then here's the link for Oz Thrips from Australia. Now, other identification resources or these tools that I'm using are not necessarily always regional specific. Sometimes you might have one such as this key by Masumoto, which is just a key to subfamily of Thrupiny that are have been found in quarantine in, Jap in Japan. And basically these are interceptions of, of quarantine species from all over the world. So it's not really regional specific. You're getting, you're getting interceptions from all over the world. So you could use uh, this to get uh, at least a, a genus level identification in that subfamily. Uh, if you happen to get an idolothrupine, uh, this is an older, um, uh, this, this is a good one for uh, the Idolothrupiny, Mound and Palmer, 1983. Uh, if you just want uh, recent classification information or nomenclature or uh, the current status of something that you found, you can use this web page, Thrips Info Wiki. I believe they call it the Wiki, Wiki Thrips or Thrips Wiki. Um, another Manual, this is actually a guide which is very good for economic species. Uh, it doesn't, it's not going to be very comprehensive and have all of the species in a particular genus or something like that, but ones that are of economic interest, this, this is a very good uh, reference. Um, now the final one is the Panchetothrypiny. This is a monograph by Wilson. This is worldwide, so no matter where you've got your Panchetothrypiny that you've You've identified this panchetothrypine from anywhere in the world. This should help you out a lot. Um, if you're interested in the biology of, 
of these of the thrips you can also use some of these references these are all obviously these are not all inclusive but these are some that we've used commonly all right these are the collaborators thank you very much questions I have found a specimen from a regional area and it doesn't key out in a regional key what should I do thank you mark for an excellent question actually with the movement of cargoes and persons in this day and age, thrips, thrips pests are moving around at a rapid rate. So you may use one and you have a finite amount of taxa from that particular region in that key. You may not be able to key it out. So then you want to go to other keys from other parts of the world. It very well could be something that's trying to transplant or move along. So are there any advantages or disadvantages to choosing to use an interactive key like a lucid key as opposed to a dichotomous key? Thank you, John. That was also an excellent question. Is, are there advantages or disadvantages of a lucid key or a dichotomous key? An advantage maybe of a dichotomous key would be you don't have to rely on technology. You know, you can just go ahead You've got that dichotomous key, you can use it anywhere. Um, the lucid keys, advantages, you have, you can readily access images of specimens. You can start anywhere in the key. You can take any character and begin, and you can key it out because that works by the process of elimination. As you eliminate taxa, if you have taxa that are very similar, it would allow you to compare those species. A uh, dichotomous key won't allow you to do that. Furthermore, if you're building a key and you're building a lucid key or an interactive key, you can continually add species or genera or whatever, and you don't have to retool the whole, whole entire key. Whereas a dichotomous key, you have to pretty much start all over again. So it's, it's much more time consuming.